Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 877. The topic today is gentlemen, how you can truly respect and honor your partner. And ladies, listen up too. And I'm gonna speak about some things that have been really on my mind today and it's been memes that triggered this. So explain how you can have a better relationship and how men you can serve your partner well and yourself in a way that is very additive. Now I know I'm gonna challenge some people with this, so stay tuned. Before I jump into the talk, uh, uh, before I jump into the talk at in full, in before I dive in, um, let me introduce myself. So you know, I am and why I talk about this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Lots of principles about relationships that you'll learn from and benefit from if you wish to get the book. I do encourage it because I am to have been the author, so I'm kind of proud of it. So. Yes, thank you, Mary. Um, you like my stay on your side talk. Yes, that stay in your lane. I think stay in your lane is that? Yeah, but that thing, yes. <laughs> thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, and this, by the way, is... No, hang on. I'm jumping ahead of myself. What was I saying? Yes. So, <laughs> I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which also informed my... Formed, or should say, started these talks for me three years ago. Almost three years ago. Just a couple months away. Um, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 877. So I've done a bunch of these and I'll tell you at the back end where you can watch the replays. It is a Facebook Live that I start with, which is why I'm interacting with somebody you can't see if you're watching somewhere else. And, uh, and if you are here, you can watch it here as well and interact. And you can put comments on either here or on YouTube and I'll tell you about that at the back end. So stay tuned for that. So again, episode 877. The topic today is men, how you can truly respect and appreciate your woman or your partner. And ladies, listen up too, because this will be useful things for you to think about next time you date or go out in a relationship. And I'm gonna, this is gonna be some broad strokes, but there's probably some deep stuff in it too, because I've been aware of a couple of thoughts that are sort of colliding in my awareness. So one of those is that, mechanically speaking, the masculine energy in the man, again, oh sorry, let me say, I need to preface this. So I'm gonna talk about masculine and man interchangeably and feminine and woman interchangeably, even though it's not always true because there are times, there are actually instances quite often where there are men who are naturally feminine, women are nat and naturally masculine. And on top of that, there are people who don't know how to be their full expression of masculine or feminine either. So I'm presuming this is for the people who are awake, <laughs> or awake or awoke. No, I don't use woke, that's too much of a, that's a term I can leave alone. So let me speak to this. And it's gonna start simple, but it's really deep in a some simple ways. I, I, did a, I posted a meme earlier that triggered some of my friends in a good way, some of the ladies I know, which was basically showing a couple walking down the street where the woman was on the curb side and the man was on the wall side of the, as they're walking down the street. And I, thought, and I called it a, a spot quiz just to sort of throw it out there. I posted it before because part of my passion is waking men up to being gentlemen to treat the women as ladies. Now, I know there are some men who are pissed off about this because they found women who treat them like shit and they've got their own issues going on, which I understand. But I'm speaking to the men and women who are willing to grow a bit more and find partners who they're worth honoring and being aligned with, just to be clear. <clears throat> Excuse me. By the way, if I cough and splutter during this talk, it's because a head cold hit me a couple of days ago and I'm almost over it, but it's still nagging my throat. So in this, this meme I posted earlier today, which has gotten some response, man and woman walking down the street, man on the inside, woman on the outside, and I said, spot quiz, what's wrong with this picture? And I did make a joke about how it's not about the shoes because it looks like he's wearing brown shoes with a, with a very dark, probably black pants. It might be jeans, in which case brown shoes are okay, but I'm messing around because that wasn't the point I was focusing on. Although one of my friends sarcastically said it was about her shoes and her pamp and her handbag not going together. And I was just I was like, okay, stop being silly. So my point about this is that, and I'm gonna to speak to this because one of my friends talks about how her boyfriend does walk on the inside because he, they, they, they're of the mindset that there's more risk of something happening coming from the um, inside versus from the street side, which I, I don't argue with, that's their choice, but I would say the other way around. So here's the thing, that paradigm is men truly in their gentlemanly conduct would walk on the outside of the lady as in curbside close to the street so that way something happened he could ideally move her in necessarily forcefully to the side to avoid her getting hurt by a car that comes out or something get thrown out of a car or something like that now that's modern times but this actually goes back to medieval times just to give you some history the premise of the man walking on the outside of the woman where she walked closer to the buildings and he walks closer to the middle of the road comes from medieval times there were two main stories that trigger this one of which is gallant and chivalrous and one of which isn't <laughs> well it is a different way 
So one of them, it's about how, well, let me start with the, 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 the nice one first. Back in medieval times, especially in England, houses were built where the base of the house was further away from the middle of the street and the, t- and the, and the upper floors were moved closer to the street, the way they built them out, they were stair-stepped almost. So the third floor, would be, third, third floor up would be further out. Reason being is because they would throw the slop, the shit out of the windows. And if the, st- if the house was attacked the other way, you might hit, the, hit below. But by being, st- being st- steeped out towards the middle of the street from both sides, if you throw stuff out, it goes to the middle of the road on top of the man walking next to the woman. Yes, he would sacrifice his clothes and his demeanor if a woman was walking on his inside to get hit by the crap coming out of the house being thrown out. That's one of the stories. The other story I like better personally being a guy. <laughs> now, this is also is interesting because back at those times, um, this is times before guns, before cars, before horseback. Well, maybe it's something horseback. And especially in England because this is medieval times back in England. And one reason I believe this might be tr- hmm, interesting. This might be why we drive on the left, by the way, because you didn't have this in America, because you didn't have you weren't playing with swords back when in, when America was founded. They moved on to guns and other things. So let me explain. So back in medieval times, a man would walk on the right of a woman. So she would walk on his left arm, and she would be walking along and they'd be escorting along and everything else. If someone comes the other way and then we had to challenge them, all all basically all swordsmen back then were were right handed. Um, puddles, maybe, maybe so. That's a different story. That's a different piece. That's that actually the third one. So yeah, let me get to that one. You think you're you're giving me a thought about that one? So jump ahead. Thank you, Barry. So basically, what happened? The man would draw his sword to protect her, and most swordsmen were right-handed. In fact, if you were fighting with swords, you had to be right-handed because it didn't work any other way. So couple walking along. She's in his in his left arm, is walking along. Person comes from the other side with his woman. Maybe there's an argument, a challenge, whatever it was. A man could draw his sword and protect her. Like in his right hand, so that way he'd be on her right hand side, which would be towards the middle of the road. Now, this again is in England, where basically traffic moved on the left side of the road, which is why I believe the steering wheel is on the right side of the car. Again, England, unlike America. So I have a suspicion that's where it came from. Now, I could be wrong, that's not part of my fact finding mission, but I believe it's possible. So that's one of the things. Secondly, or thirdly, as Mary was pointing out, there was a degree of um, decorum for men to protect women from being hit by puddles because during the times of um, wagons and um, horse-drawn carriages before motorized vehicles there'll be a lot of um, stuff <laughs> thrown up from the dirt from the, from the middle of the road so again woman, woman being protected by the man because of finery her gowns not and frankly it's kind of amazing if a man can protect a woman from being hit by stuff when she has such voluminous outfits back in Victorian times and he had just a narrow coat on so but the, there was a the gesture so all of that to summarize to this point which is in this meme that I posted, because there's a lot more to talk about besides this, the, the simple quiz tip was that the man should walk on the outside of the woman. There are, cer- there are circumstances that exceed that, but the point about it, and I wanna make this point very, very clear, is that when a man elevates his stature with a woman, is he, treats, he acts like a gentleman and respects her and appreciates that. And I'll answer that question later, Mary, because that's some different story. So, so, Especially because I'm left-handed, so I'll come back to that. So part of this whole conversation, this, this context, is about how men can be more like gentlemen in respect to women. It's not just walking side by side, but it's also about letting go ahead of him. It's also about holding the door for her. It's about holding the chair for her, helping her on with the coat. Now, ladies, listen up, as I said. Please be magnanimous and appreciative of that, because a man will keep doing it when he's encouraged. So yes, it should be a man's responsibility to do it all the time, but if you keep assuming it's going to be done and you don't necessarily like say thank you or appreciate it or give something back in return, he might start to stop doing it. And in some degrees, I, I would say it's okay doing that. So that's why I say it's reciprocal because I know there's some men that are pissed off about this because they've done it like that for women and then they didn't, respect, they didn't give any respect back or they didn't appreciate it and so they felt like they're being used. So there is a, there is a two sides to this conversation. But let me take it deeper. Another piece I want to put on the table, which is the biggest piece for me, besides the gentleman conduct, which is part of the big part of the puzzle, is for many men, again, masculine line to men, feminine line to women in this conversation, where men basically, when they're in the masculine, are driven by um, goals. We are focused on getting something done and being done. Getting something done and being done. Like we basically, we go for a target, then we quit, we put our feet up and relax. Goal accomplished, successfully done, put your feet up. You work nine to five, you come home, put your feet up and drink a beer and watch TV. That's kind of the, um, 
the simplistic way of doing it, but it's more than that. This is the thing, ladies, if you want more joyful relationships and better sex. So listen up for this. <laughs> this is something that came out of a conversation. I saw, I saw two things that just fit together for me in my, in my language. So this even makes sense. There's a, there's a, I posted a, a meme earlier today as well that this woman posted just a long, beautiful prose about how a woman's body, her temple, is to be entered by the man every single time as if it's his first time with reverence, with appreciation, with deference, with, with care, with respect, but also with permission. So he's not going to assume, and it says in the, in the picture, um, there's no way along the way he can assume that body is hit, that her body is his. It's just not. Now to take her as a ravishing type move when it's something that's in the relationship that can be done. But I'm not going to go there in this point. <laughs> I don't think I will. Let me get back to the, what I was trying to make the point about. So here's the thing. Because we as men in masculine are goal oriented, for some relationship experiences you may have had as ladies, or as men even, you might discover when the, relationship was when, when the couple get into a relationship, how he didn't effort much. In fact, he, put, he may put his feet up energetically and not do anything and just be along for the ride. I did this in a past relationship, so I know how it feels to be on the bad side of this. So ladies, you might be finding that your man wasn't stepping up and doing what he needed to do every time. The reason being is not because he's a bad guy, usually, but nine times out of 10, it's because he doesn't have another goal. Now he may have goals in the world with his job or travel or set up or, or to do something, to build something. But in the relationship, unless it's something that is on the table for him to do as a next step, a goal to achieve, a place to be, a next elevation to raise to, there's nothing really to focus on. Now, I'm not saying this is black and white because men ideally are creative too and can come up with things and are willing to play and experience and explore as well. But realizing that for us men, for us and for you ladies to help us sometimes to express a desire for a next thing, whatever that is. Maybe it is to have another level of sexual connection where you're going to go to workshops or retreats and explore sexual depths of connection. Maybe it's about having a different level of intimacy, which doesn't always mean sex, where there's a connection where you can have such, connect, such, such deep knowingness of each other without even touching each other. That could be a goal for a man to achieve. And it sound, I, don't, it doesn't, I know it sounds crass to say it's a goal, but we are wired in the way that we go step, 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 step. So ladies, you might, you're more aligned in your feminine for the journey, exploring and enjoying every moment, every step, every flow along the way. We're looking at the next point, the next point, the next point, which is why driving is different for men and for women. So it's understanding that. So understanding this piece of the puzzle gives you ladies an opportunity to invite your man to the next level of what he wants to be and express and, and have in the relationship. And for men watching this, opportunities for us to see beyond the fact we've got the goal, now what are we gonna do with it? The relationship that is. What do you want to progress it to? Where do you want to go? It might be big goals, like in five years, I want to be like married and settle down or have kids. Something could be that, something like that. Or it might be, I want to know this woman like I've never known anybody before. There's all sorts of goals. And having ones that are honest, aligned and authentic and having ones that are lined up beyond that ones, there's a flow even for men of goal, then next goal, then next goal. So there's no idle time necessarily. It can be a very potent way to be in a relationship. So I hope this makes sense. It's a pivotal piece for some people who don't get this in a relationship, I understand. I didn't get it for a long time. And what I just saw today just put some things together in a way that made sense to me more, more clearly than I've done before. So, oh, the hell. So, Mary, go back to what you were saying about you like, you like, well, there we go. So, you like a man holding a chair, opening a door, et cetera, always acknowledge it, visual, verbally and smile. After we married, that ended. So, I missed it. Yeah. A friend of mine just talked about that, how when, the, when she first dated this guy, he would always walk in front of her, not beside, not behind, but in front of her. That was a clue that she missed, unfortunately. So I, I'm sorry that you had to lose that in the marriage. So yeah, that's the thing about him doing that. So you felt less respected as time went on, and especially when you wanted your son to know to be a gentleman. Yes, the wasman just grunted when her son asked what, to, what was dad, was about dad doing it too. So here's the thing. A book I recommend, besides my own book, and I mentioned my, this book in my book, is called The Way of the Superior Man, a book that I recommend for every woman to read and to give to any man she's dating. And men, if you haven't read it yet, I recommend it highly. The Way of the Superior Man by David Data, D-E-I-D-A. So it's Data, not Data, Data, D-E-I-D-A. It's on Amazon, it's an audio book, it's all that stuff I've got, but I both, I've given away copies of the book so many times and I've taught workshops from it because it's so potent. It's a book I recommend, it changed my life. And the funny thing is women told me about the book 10 years before I even read it. So it was already out in the world, it's been out for 25, 30 years. So 
that will um, that will help you um, and help your son too. So there was a question you said earlier. Where was it? I also heard about the left being the feminine will be on the left side and right is the male side. Well, it's the thing, um, and this is something told, somebody told me about this once. I was re watching a uh, webinar about this. I am left-handed, but as you may have seen, I'm a guy. <laughs> and there are a few men that are left-handed. Same as there are women that are right-handed. So I'm not sh what I'm aware of in terms of the right-handed, left-handed piece. This is a PS. It's not part of this talk, but it's understanding the differences. Is right-handed is left brain, left-handed is right brain because we cross wide inside. And what it means is that for straight men who are left-handed, we tend to be more conscious of and sensitive to the feminine. And women. I think, and this is a part I don't have facts on, but from what I, what I can get conjecture as a reverse of that is that women who are right-handed may have more functionality in the masculine. So it may be, I don't say it's harder, but it may be more conscious effort for women to move back to their feminine side when they're already right-handed because they do things from that place, which is the right hand is very much a doing, 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 whereas the, whereas the right, left hand is more of a feeling, energetic. And again, this is what I've heard. I'm not saying it's the facts, but it's my experience of what I receive from myself because I definitely found myself being around women more than men most of my life. Even and definitely being straight, wasn't a player, wasn't getting laid a lot because it wasn't about that. It was about just a kinship to the feminine, which is why I do the work I do with women. That's what drives my work more than anything else. It's having deep respect and reverence to the feminine, but also residing in the masculine heart, which has been, frankly, for me, a very interesting journey. So this is part of my journey here to share this and to hopefully give you some clues. So I hope this made some sense to you. And uh, you're very welcome, Mary, that yes, you can definitely hope for a future relationship. 877 talks, plenty of content to teach you from. So I hope this is all going to help to you. Okay, so I think I've made the points I want to make. So memes, the two memes, the context coming together, the masculine and feminine, the, the dance of polarity, and also the expression of um, goals in relationship that work for men and for women. If you have any questions, let me know. I think I've basically got the points. That I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I'll put some links in the comments for you if you want to reach out for support and help, particularly for the ladies. My book is out for men and women, by the way. I'll put a link for the comment in the comments of my book. I am proud of it. I am promoting it. I'm pushing it because I love my book, and it's on. And you can get a copy yourself. Um, I'll also put the, a link in the comments for a conversation with me. If this is challenging to you, or if you have any questions, or you want to go deeper, or if you want to think about maybe coaching with me, I'll put a link in the comments. You have a complimentary chat with me, and we can talk. Because yes, if we line up, I will definitely offer my services. If it doesn't, that's fine too, but I want to give you something of value in the half an hour we talk. So that link will be in the comments as well. Um, and that's it, I think. So book, conversation with me if you want to talk further. The other piece, no. There's other links, but not, re not relevant in this talk. So I hope this talk makes sense to you. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. And this talk, I know, is maybe pivotal for some of you. You might be like, oh, I knew that. Well, then again, you might be like, oh, crap, that changes everything. So I appreciate your feedback and what you think about this. I definitely thanks, Mary, for your comments in the talk. And if you want to talk afterwards, I'll comment or link below, message below. Feel free to do so. Hi, Della. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned, episode 877. I do this every day of the week, seven days a week, which is why it's Saturday today, and drinks casually. And I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can follow me here. You can, there's a button somewhere around here you can click on for more information, and you can click on there saying so be notified next time, I got my, next time I go live. So you can join me tomorrow, same time, same channel. Um, replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is uh, Barry Selby, the author. The replays there are pretty good. You're very welcome. Glad it helped. Um, the my somewhere else come back okay the the business page that has all my replays but only about i would say maybe half of them are up there i'm not sure but facebook doesn't keep them all ready to be shown they do they aren't stored in facebook but they're not put there for some reason there's a limit for the size of the album i guess so yes you can go to my business page which is barry silver to author and like my page and look at them there or better yet if you want to see all of my broadcasts if you case you want to I have a YouTube channel where they're all stored. I've, I've stored them all on YouTube as well as on my computer because you never trust the platforms. So if you're going to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all these live. This will be up there as well. And again, the links I mentioned will be in the comments after I sign off. And uh, I think that's about it. I appreciate you watching. I hope it's made some sense. This is a deep topic, I know, and hopefully it's given you some insights, some steps, and some ahas that you can use in your life, your daily life, and your relationships. So with that, as always, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. If you have any questions, thoughts, you can message me, message me over social media or reach out to me below. And I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.
Oh, you've been watching YouTube to catch up. Great, thank you, Mary. I'm glad you did that. Feel free to share. Oh, by the way, if you want to share them out, feel free to do so. I won't stop you. <laughs> thank you for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.